Hello and welcome to this Pro Tools Tips video. Today we're going to be talking about sample rate and bit depth and how they affect us when we're using Pro Tools. So why do these matter? Well, when we create a new session within Pro Tools, file new session, it asks us a couple of questions. And two of these questions are the sample rate and the bit depth. So we've got a couple of options here and some more options here. So what would it mean practically if I selected 48 kilohertz and the bit depth to be 24 bit? and created a new session. Well, let's bring up this graph and I want you to have a look at this quickly. I want you to think of this horizontal axis as the time. So here where it starts is going to be naught seconds and here where it ends is one second. So this whole period is going to be one second of time. And I want you to think vertically of this axis as the resolution. So the vertical resolution, so how many points along here we can go and how accurately. So if we have a sound wave coming in and it comes in like this, okay, so if we choose a sample rate of 48 kilohertz, what that means is 48,000 times in one second, so in this period, it's going to take a sample of where this waveform is. So 48,000 times it's going here, 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 here. So it's taking 48,000 of these across the period of one second. So the resolution vertically, what is that? We want you to think of this as the bit depth. So this is the resolution at which we take these points. So it's quite complicated to work it out the exact amount, but I just want you to think in terms of 16-bit and 24-bit. So if I have the bit depth set at 16-bit, I'm going to have less resolution vertically than if I had it set at 24 bit. So the higher the bit depth, the more resolution we have vertically for the points that we're plotting on here 48,000 times a second. So what does this added resolution mean? Well, it means we get a much better dynamic range. So the difference between the loudest thing you can record and the quietest thing. So at 16 bit, we'll get a dynamic range of 93 dB, which is pretty good, but 24 bit, will give us 115 dB, so much better, and 32-bit even more. So a couple of things to keep in mind when you're setting these. The sample rate not only just sets the amount of times a second a sample is taken, but it also dictates the highest frequency that you can record. Now the way this works is you take the sample rate and you halve it and that gives you the highest frequency that that sample rate can record. So with this example, at 48 kilohertz, we halve that and we get 24 kilohertz. So 24 kilohertz is the highest frequency that we can record in this sample rate. Now, does it matter that we can't record anything higher than that? For some instruments, some people will argue that we can feel the frequencies up there even if we can't hear them, because a human's range is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So it really depends on your prerogative, but 48 kilohertz should be good enough for pretty much everything you want to do. So that's what I'd set it at, 48 kilohertz for most projects. Now the bit depth, I'd set that at 24 bit, and the reason I'd do that is that gives you 115 dBs of dynamic range which is more than most analog gear is going to give you, probably more than your microphone and your preamp is going to give you. So you really don't have to worry about much more than that. Now, there's an argument that was going around for a few years saying that if we're printing it at the end to an MP3 or a CD, which is 16-bit, what is the advantage of working at 24-bit? Because the end product is going to end up at 16 anyway. Well, this matters because if we're working in Pro Tools, we're going to be using EQs and changing the gain and levels of things. And every time we do that, it's going to be recalculating the waveform. So we want to be working at the highest resolution while it's doing that. And only once we finish the track do we want to bounce it down to a 16-bit WAV file. So just to recap, we've gone over the settings that come up when you boot a new Pro Tools session. And we've talked about the sample rate and the bit depth and what they affect when we're recording and working in Pro Tools. So next time, I'm going to be taking a look at using a MIDI keyboard within Pro Tools and using virtual instrument tracks. Thanks for watching, hope it was useful, and I'll see you next time.